Healing Emotional Eating, Episode 46. Up and down a sliding scale, wonder if it's ever gonna end. Food has always held me hostage, I just want to feel healthy again. And thanks to my new friend, Jen, it's healthy, show me the way. To deal with stress while I'm taking off the weight Learning to love myself Janet's here to help She's just a click away Go to JanetDThomas.com And stay on your journey today Welcome to Healing Emotional Eating The Missing Link to Sustainable Weight Loss I'm your host, Janet D. Thomas This podcast is designed to educate, inspire, and support you, and to give you practical and effective tools to assist you in your desire to lose weight and keep it off. We're discussing a different approach to sustainable weight loss in this podcast because just like me, chances are you're already an expert when it comes to what foods to eat to lose weight. And if you lose weight and gain it back over and over and over again, losing weight and keeping it off isn't just about changing the foods you eat. Like me, perhaps you've had a very long-standing shame-filled attachment with emotional eating Among other things, beginning when I was a little girl, I would grab food and quickly shove it into my mouth when nobody was looking. I was always mesmerized by the calm I felt when I was eating. It was so meditative and it provided a true escape from my troubles, even if just for a few precious moments at a time. I knew that I had issues with my eating. I knew that my sneak eating and general obsession with eating was a bit over the top, which was evident by my increasing weight. And I was equally obsessed with weight loss. Among other things, I didn't think I was lovable when I was overweight. So I was constantly reaching for the love by hoping I would lose weight and lose it very quickly. Now, I had been on this particular hamster wheel for decades. And after gaining and losing over a thousand pounds throughout the years, something finally clicked where I was able to lose weight and keep it off. I found a new way to respond to stress and to my challenging emotions in life-enhancing ways that didn't involve eating to manage or avoid them. And I also jump-started my inner fire. I found something in my life that was worth living for. I found something in my life that started to mean more to me than eating my favorite comfort foods that kept me weighted down. So in this podcast, we aren't distracting ourselves by talking about food and diets and exercise. In this podcast, we're being courageous enough or desperate enough to roll up our sleeves. In this podcast, we are learning how to be in touch with ourselves very respectfully so that when we're stressed or feel some uncomfortable emotional stuff, we can safely ride the wave of them without numbing ourselves by eating. And the beauty of this is that you'll find out that the clarity you actually seek, the clarity that you're yearning for, is underneath the emotion. We can learn to transform our yucky feelings before mindlessly or frantically looking for something to eat. What's happening that needs to be calmed down? What's happening that we want to be distracted from? What non-preferred experience are we looking to push away? So I had the courage or actually the desperation to start looking at that through using some really, really simple tools. I started to get comfortable within my wide spectrum of emotion. And here's the deal for me, because eating was my substitute for love I yearned for. When I started accepting and honoring myself, and when I acknowledged all of my deep feelings as normal, and when I learned how to transform my non-preferred experiences without numbing myself by eating, I didn't need food as my love substitute anymore. I learned to give myself some real acknowledgement and understanding, and that's what translated into my sustainable weight loss. 
So with this podcast, you can explore tools to help ignite your courage to stop eating to numb your feelings. With this podcast, you can explore how to calm yourself differently. With this podcast, you can learn to shift your relationship with food from being your best friend to being something that provides joy and fuel so that you can live the life you want to live. And you deserve to feel as good as possible and energized about your life exactly as you are right now. To me, Weight loss isn't about the number on the scale. To me, weight loss is about being able to do what you want to do and live the life you want to live. To me, it's about being comfortable in your body to do the things you want to do. So to me, and for this podcast, it's about you returning to health and vitality. It's about re-energizing on the inside as your foundation to re-energize on the outside. And this is what healing emotional eating, to me, is all about. So there are some tools that we've explored in depth, like in episode two about how I think we approach weight loss backwards to how to transform your pesky inner critic, which is in episode three, how to overcome self-judgment in episode four, and in episodes five and six and eight are all about your emotions. As I mentioned, the focus for this podcast is emotional healing work, which is inner work. I believe that this inner work can help you lose weight and keep it off, but it's not a quick fix, yet it can be a permanent one. So thank you for listening today and let's go underground to heal for real. Let's explore the idea of obsession for a bit. One definition of obsession is an idea or thought that continually preoccupies one's mind. Once again, an idea or thought that continually preoccupies one's mind. Now, I propose that we remove the shame or disgrace with the idea of obsession. I invite you to consider that obsession, an idea or thought that continually preoccupies one's mind is a neutral idea. We can neutralize it. It's neither automatically good nor automatically bad. It's simply one state of being. One can experience something that is consistently top of mind and it can be something that doesn't hurt anyone else. After all, thinking about something is one thing and acting out in ways that compromise our well-being or others' well-being is where the problem lies. But if we don't cross that line and act out, if we don't do things to try to control other people, does that make obsession bad or wrong? One of my nieces is obsessed with helping folks who live in underserved communities and is really into her school studies. A friend of mine is an amazing artist and is obsessed with doing his craft and teaching art classes. Art is top of mind for him, and expressing it and teaching it brings profound joy to him and to many others. If I need a plumber, I would like for the plumber to be obsessed with being a good plumber, right? I would like to know that the dentist who works on my teeth is passionate about what he or she does and to be obsessed with doing a good job. So we're talking about healthy obsession here. And I recognize that I too can be really single focused. Whenever I put my mind on something, I will immerse myself in it. And yes, I've made peace with the fact that I obsess. And I've also made peace with the fact that I obsess about food and eating. And in looking at my own history, I know that I tend to get into a groove of an eating frenzy, if that makes sense. There are times when I've become super locked in and single focused on eating. And when I get into a groove of eating, I become obsessed with eating and I'm always thinking about when I'm going to be eating next, even more so than usual. So it's kind of like experiencing a runaway train that when I get into that groove, all bets are off. I mean, the train has left the station, it is on that track and I am going forward full blast ahead. I've experienced this time and time again in my life. And I believe that this is where my extreme yo-yo dieting stems from. 
The fact that I've gained 60 pounds and then lost 50 pounds and then gained 70 and lost 45 and then up 20 and down 35, I think that's the result of my ability to focus on something really hard. But for me, gaining weight is like riding on a runaway train. However, years ago, the last time I was in an eating groove, I had already learned how to respond to my stressful situations and challenging emotions without eating. I had a healthy regard for myself. I learned how to talk to myself kindly, and I recognized that I was really strong for surviving some pretty harrowing experiences. So I felt a keen sense of self-respect that I hadn't experienced before. So with my self-respect, I actually let myself eat whatever. At this point, I had significantly curbed my emotional eating and I was no longer eating emotionally. I was just eating for the sheer pleasure of it. I love eating. I just love it. And that's what I was doing. Now, some folks have told me, well, Janet, I don't eat emotionally. I just love to eat or I crave fast food all the time. And I understand that. According to heartmath.com, being overweight or obese is 70% related to emotional eating. So I guess the other 30% is not about emotional eating. It could just be about loving food or having a food addiction. And healthy obsession can handle this as well. So I think it's all good. I realized that during my journey to reconnect with my own value and worth, which are topics that we talk about at length in this podcast, my obsession to lose weight shifted. I didn't have that anymore. I did, however, have an obsession about my own self-respect and treating myself kindly. So keep in mind that one obsession can shift into another. If you find yourself addicted to or obsessed with eating in general, or if you find yourself addicted to or obsessed with eating specific non-nutritious things, your obsession can shift. And that's what's so exciting about the idea of obsession, of having something consistently top of mind. For example, in my case, when I was feeling good about myself on the inside, I became obsessed about having my body reflect how good I was feeling on the inside. So the way I see it, being obsessive about food can be really great because that same obsession can transform into getting you really attached to the idea of having the freedom in your body to do what you want to do. So with a healthy dose of self-acknowledgement and self-respect, your obsession can transform into a more life-affirming one. You see, when I weighed 250 pounds, I knew that I was going to be hitting 300 pounds there pretty soon because I was in my familiar eating groove and that runaway train that I can get locked into. I could see that my runaway train with my eating habits could lead me to obesity-related sickness. And that's when I got scared. And that's when I decided to make a change. So I invite you to consider that with some self-regard and self-respect, you can shift your obsession with food and eating into sustainable weight loss. I invite you to consider that your ability to really focus on something, your ability to accept your reality of keeping something top of mind can be an asset and not a liability. Now, because I already felt good exactly as I was, that's how I was recognizing my strength exactly as I was. So I think that successfully being able to switch gears after being on a certain track with my eating had everything to do with my self-respect. It was organic for me to play and daydream in my mind when I was happily heavy and I knew that I would take off the weight one day. And I knew that when the feeling hit me, that it would be time to do it. And I knew that I would be single focused with it. Now, I've said this before, as counterintuitive as it is, when I allowed myself to eat whatever I wanted to eat, when I embraced my love for eating in its purest, purest state within my own self-respect, that was the beginning of the end of my obesity. You see, although I was on a runaway train with my eating, my natural joy and self-respect was like laying down new train tracks. And with these new train tracks, 
combined with my decision to want my body to reflect how good I was feeling on the inside, I was able to change course. So I invite you to consider that you don't have to try to stop your runaway train. Your enthusiasm and your self-understanding and your self-acceptance are like laying new train tracks for yourself each and every moment. You don't have to force yourself to think differently. It's really about staying in your good feelings about yourself and your life and channeling your ability to obsess in a different way towards reconnecting with your physical health. It's about using your same momentum, using your same joy that's already in place and using that same foundation to enable you to ultimately shift your behavior with eating. So allow your ability to obsess to work for you. Allow your mental focus to work for you. Feeling a healthy dose of self-respect combined with keeping your healthy future top of mind can help you shift your behavior with eating. So if you naturally obsess, consider that you have the right building blocks. Consider that losing weight and keeping it off may require the same type of obsession as your obsession with eating. And here's what I think is cool about it. When you eat differently, when you consistently eat nutritious foods, when you consistently eat real foods that promote energy and health and lightness in your body, you will lose weight. It's a surefire certainty that when you eat light enhancing foods, your body's going to get lighter. It's that simple and it's that predictable. It's that controllable. And this is what you control. This is within your control. And here's where obsession can come into play. While consistently eating things that promote health and energy and lightness in your body that will result in losing weight, the only variable in there is time. The only variable that comes into play is time because things take time to cultivate or to grow and to manifest. We're in a system of time and space where things can take time to show up as opposed to being able to manifest something right away. And thank goodness for this, really. I mean, how many times can you remember really wanting something and then being disappointed when you didn't get it? And then in time, you look back on it and you think, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness I didn't get what I thought I wanted. Thank goodness for that. I think part of us being here is to grow in our ability to focus, to create what we want. And time is the thing that helps us do just that. Time can help us be really clear about what it is we want to create. I mean, our thoughts can be all over the place. Imagine that as soon as you thought of, say, an elephant, that one would just appear in the room. You might not be prepared for that at all. So time can be a loving safety mechanism for us because among other things, we might not immediately understand the impact of getting what we think we want. Time is like a silent friend that is saying, uh, excuse me, are you sure you want that? Are you sure that you want that? So it might be helpful to really explore why we think we want what we want. And we're not there yet with immediately manifesting things, but time is moving in our ability to do that more quickly. So I remember in the 1970s when I had my first car and the coolest thing in the world was my eight track player. I mean, forget about the radio. I could actually listen to music of my choice on that eight track tape. It was the coolest thing ever. And then not so long after that, a cassette player was the thing. Cassettes were smaller than eight tracks. And not only could we fast forward them to another song, we could actually rewind them to hear a song again. I mean, rewinding too? That was like, that was like dying and going to heaven. But then add to it, some cassette players were really fancy. You wouldn't have to eject the cassette and turn it over to hear side two. With these fancy cassette players, you could hear a click at the end of the first side, and then it would start playing side two automatically. And that was badass. And then 
Here come CDs where we could just jump from song to song, any song actually, really quickly. Then the multiple CD players where we could jump from album to album and song to song within those albums. And now with digital music, we can listen to what we want with a snap of our finger on demand. So yes, with technology, we are manifesting things more quickly. Or like with typewriters, back in the day, one would have to get a piece of paper, roll it into the typewriter, type on it, and hope you didn't make a mistake, then take out the paper. Now today with computers, we can type, we can correct mistakes, and print to our heart's content. And not only that, We don't even have to type anymore. We can talk and the computer will put the words on the screen for us. And now there are 3D printers and even more advancements that we aren't even aware of. So yes, we are manifesting things more quickly. Now, I write a lot. There's a surprise, right? I have tons of ideas every day and I dictate notes into my phone and I have sticky notes on my bedroom walls. And one day I thought... What if I could just think something and beam it onto a sticky note onto my wall to use later on? Now that was just a fun thought. Not happening, but fun. However, when it comes to losing weight, it's just not that way. Now, I used to do this regularly. I would pretty much starve myself for one day and be really, really disappointed the next morning that I didn't lose 50 pounds. You see, I'm an instant gratification kind of girl, I have been, and especially when it came to weight loss because I wanted so desperately to feel better about myself and my life, and I thought that losing weight was the number one key to that. And as I understand it now, for me, the concept of time is a saving grace because I learned how to keep a steady intention to stay focused. I sometimes imagine what it would have been like if I were able to manifest everything right away. Based upon my emotional eating, one minute conceivably, I would weigh 300 pounds, and the next I would weigh 140, then I'd weigh 600, then 140, then 200. I mean, if I was able to manifest my erratic eating in my body right away, bless my heart, I'd be dead. My body wouldn't have been able to handle the dramatic daily or hourly weight fluctuations. Our bodies are just not designed that way. So with my shifted obsession with reconnecting with my health, coupled with consistently eating healthier, lighter, and life-affirming foods... In time, I settled into being able to keep a steady focus by focusing on my health just today and allowing my body to follow suit at its own intelligent pace. Author Mary Shelley once wrote, nothing contributes so much to tranquilize the mind as a steady purpose, a point on which the soul may fix its intellectual eye. I love that quote. I want to say it again just for fun. Nothing contributes so much to tranquilize the mind as a steady purpose, a point on which the soul may fix its intellectual eye. And as I see it, this is when healthy obsession comes into play. Having a steady focus just today on deciding to eat life-enhancing and energy-promoting foods is pretty much a certainty that our bodies will inevitably respond. Now with me, experiencing obesity and going in and out of it over the years, the idea that it was a certainty that I would be able to lose weight, the idea that it was a certainty was a very, very exciting thing for me. All I needed to do was to stay focused on my intention. The steady focus is the daily commitment. It is in the doing something that's manageable just today in support of and in happy anticipation of a goal. This combined with time makes it achievable. It's so exciting. But was it hard? Uh, Heck yeah. Was I often pissed off and impatient? Definitely. And this is when my ability to obsess came in handy. 
Nothing contributes so much to tranquilize the mind as a steady purpose, a point on which the soul may fix its intellectual eye. Manifesting things can take time, and perhaps this may be why the things we manifest can be so valuable to us. And with the gift of the ability to focus, I mean, what else can we create? We can create pretty much anything. So I invite you to think about laying some new track for your train by working towards your self-acceptance and self-respect. This can enable you to take your obsession with food and eating, keeping that same momentum and shifting it. You can tweak it by saying, I respect myself and I want my body to reflect that self-respect. I want to have some fun. I want to go places and feel good and dance and play and celebrate my life. By introducing light and energy producing foods just today and using your same intensity to do that just today, And then the next day, just today, and then the next day, just today, it is a certainty that you will lose weight. They go together. Your effort and your focus on it, your desire to have it will be rewarded. It is a certainty. It is that simple. It isn't easy, but it's very simple. The only difference is time. The only question mark is time and how long it will take for you to get there. So imagine that you're already there. That excitement is laying the track to keep your train moving ahead quickly without losing any momentum. Nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. When you are locked into your top of mind intention to reclaim your health, you will experience opposition, but you will fight through your own considerations because this idea, your health, is an idea whose time has come. The point is, there is nothing to cut off or disown within you. Everything about you can be acknowledged, embraced, and channeled towards your greatest joy and your deepest intentions on the quality of your life. It really is just a matter of breathing and getting some space in there and releasing the judgment and moving forward with the intention of your life looking like you want it to look and feeling the way that you want it to feel. So obsession, something that stays at the top of your mind more often than not. And the way I see it, obsessing about your self-care is critical and wonderful and important, all those things. And because you are worthy and valuable exactly as you are, don't wait for the conditions to be right to start recognizing your value. Don't wait for the conditions to be right, to start paying attention to yourself, to start listening to your thoughts without judgment and to have a spring in your step. So do this with me right now if you can. Smile, smile, and wiggle your toes in recognition of your ability to really pay attention to yourself and to know through and through that you have the ability to respond to your life. You are glorious and wonderful. You were born for joy and celebration and fun. So smile and wiggle your toes. Smile and wiggle them in recognition of this. And keep in mind, you have ultimate control. You can reconnect with the joy and passion for your life. And the fact that you are listening to this means you're already connected. Enjoy riding this train, will you? Your time is precious, and I'm so honored that you've joined me today. If you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to drop me a line at support at JanetDThomas.com. There are also more resources available on my website at JanetDThomas.com, and I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Please remember that your value has nothing to do with the number on the scale. You are valuable exactly as you are, and you're doing just fine. Yet, if you want to improve your experience by losing weight, remember why you're doing it. Keep your dream front and center and let it be strong enough and big enough and real enough right now to keep you making excellent, nutritious, and life-affirming choices today. 
And finally, please consider leaving an honest review of this podcast on iTunes. Your review may be that one push someone needs to listen in for some love and support. Thank you in advance for embracing a healthy obsession this week. And I'll see you next time. I'm learning to love myself. Janet's here to help. She's just a click away. Go to JanetDThomas.com and stay on your journey today.